battle rages on. That ball is absolutely scorched. And Adrian Gonzalez just homered. 11 Dodgers have gone down swinging tonight. The New York Mets are a win away from going to the National League Championship Series. A 13-7 Game 3 win has put Mets fans in celebration mode. A win away from the National League Championship Series. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. Tonight, the Dodgers fighting for their playoff lives, taking on the Mets here on TBS. Well, we know this much. The Chicago Cubs are waiting for the winner of this series. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Cal Ripken is here along with Ron Darling. So at night's end here at City Field, could be champagne all over the place for the Mets, or we could all be moving to Los Angeles for a decisive game five. Cal painted up for me. The Mets win if... Well, they simply have to figure out how to score runs against Clayton Kershaw. They figured out how to score runs last night. Curtis Granderson had a big night. Here's a three-run double. Darno hits a home run, and Cespedes hits a long three-run homer. They all had great nights. They scored runs really easy. And here's Granderson, another double in the left center field gap that scores two more runs. An historic night for the Mets. 13 runs, 13 hits. The important stat for me is at 6 for 15 with runners in scoring position. So offense doesn't necessarily carry over. Uh, but my experience is when you're facing the best, you want to feel the best. I think Cespedes and Granderson feel pretty good. Hold on, Cal. Just hold on a second. <laughs> We're talking about the best pitcher of his generation. Three Cy Youngs. I know all the numbers. They're all negative in the postseason. Five straight losses, one and six. In elimination games, his ERA is nine. But at some point, he's got to have that signature game. And I'm asking, why not? Dodger fans are asking, why not tonight? Last time the New York Mets won a playoff series, it was 2006. The last time they were able to celebrate a playoff series win on their home field, 15 years ago. It's game four. Glad you're with us. First pitch coming right up.
York City electrified for game four of the National League Division Series as the Mets take the field here at City Field. 68 degrees. Forecast is clear. And we cannot wait for baseball here as the Dodgers take on the Mets. Tonight's batting order is presented by T-Mobile. First time there's been a lefty starter for New York. Another different lineup set out by Don Mattingly. P.K. Hernandez leads it off. Howie Kendrick in the two-hole, followed by Adrian Gonzalez and Justin Turner hits cleanup. Corey Seager batting the starting lineup. Yassiel Puig, for the first time in this series, gets a start in right field. A.J. Ellis behind the plate. Justin Ruggiano, who has gotten some starts against left-handed pitching in left field in the last month of the season, bats eight. And Clayton Kershaw does the pitching in a must-win game for the Dodgers. And you, can you imagine the must-win game goes to a kid who grew up a Mets fan on Long Island, 4-0 on a season on six starts, but he had his season interrupted twice with two different injuries. Oh, what he must be going through right now. They're setting the defense. It looks a lot like yesterday's game. You got Steven Matz going to Darno behind the plate. Moving around the diamond. We've got Daniel Murphy and William Flores who made a couple of nice plays. Lucas Duda at first and David Wright with his two gold gloves. We go to the outfield. we got Cespedes in left tonight, Granderson in right, and Juan Lagares sporting a gold glove for 2014 in center field. Well, Clayton Kershaw, and we've documented his postseason struggles which go of all the regular season success in the three Cy Youngs, and you talk about fire in the belly here before game four. We're talking about Clayton was an ex-football player in high school, uh, exhibiting some of that behavior, almost hurting some of his teammates in the dugout. Well, can he channel that, uh, that energy? Because many times you want to control yourself with the emotion. Can that be good? It can be good, but he'll have a few minutes to calm down because he got the top of the inning. We are ready to go. So glad you're with us here on TBS. TK Hernandez waiting on the first offering from Stephen Matz. Nowhere near 1-0. If he said it once, he said it half a dozen times in his press conference yesterday. Stephen Matz, I just want to take the emotion out of it. Good luck to you, kid. Foul back. A ball and a strike. Well, that first pitch looks like uh, his body got out before his arm caught up. And that's usually when you're trying to throw it really hard or maybe a little nervous. Hernandez, a 307 hitter in the regular season, two for six in this series. Takes a breaking pitch over. One and two. He righted himself in the last two pitches. A nice fastball for a strike, and he broke up a breaking ball. I mentioned the two different injuries this year. He had a latch or under his armpit injury for a while and then some back spasms. So he has not pitched in a major league game in three weeks. As a result, limited starts in the bigs, six. Also limited losses, zero. He was 4-0, and oh, and he gets Hernandez for the first out here of game four. The great look about that is that Darno helping his young pitcher call for that breaking ball on the ground. Perfectly placed. It looks like a strike and it breaks down into the dirt. Gets the swing and miss. Here's Howie Kendrick. Kendrick's bringing a good bat for the Dodgers here in this series. He's 5 for 13, a home run and four runs batted in. That was a 1 0 changeup right there. Looked like he was looking at his footing on the mound. Two balls, no strikes. Here it comes. In the air, shallow right. Randerson, two down. Mm -hmm. 
so I talk about let's take the emotion out of it as Stephen Matz was saying but really Ronnie how do you get it all under control when you're 24 years old it's a hometown start in a playoff game I mean it doesn't it just doesn't get any bigger than that for Stephen Matz you don't I mean that's really what the the issue is is that you don't know exactly how you're going to feel until you step on that rubber so far so good Adrian Gonzalez looks at a strike on one Softly hit up the middle. Three up, three down for Stephen Max. His parents, Ron and Lori, looking on, pinching themselves. We head to the bottom half of the first. Welcome back to City Field. Tonight's batting order for the Mets is presented by T-Mobile. Curtis Granderson having a great series. Leads off. Then it's David Wright. Daniel Murphy in the three hole. And Juventus Cespedes who hit that, that bomb last night. Three run shot. Hitting cleanup. Travis Darno, Then Lucas Duda. Wilmer Flores the shortstop. Juan Lagares the center fielder. And Steven Matz does the pitching. And Matz ninth against... Clayton Kershaw the biggest key for Kershaw in this game his last three postseason starts left-handed hitters have three home runs and 10 RBIs Granderson had two hits in the first game Granderson six for 11 in the series he's knocked in five runs all last night had a couple of doubles off the wall. And the count even a ball and a strike. I wonder if it was in Clayton's mind about swinging at the first pitch in game one. Because he bounced that uh, fastball, tried to keep it down, made a nice pitch on the 1-0. On the Those five RBIs last night all off left-handed pitching. And I can remember a time in his career when Curtis Granderson couldn't hit lefties. 
Kevin Long really helped him out when he was with the Yankees. Long is the hitting coach now with the New York Mets. Well, that 1 1 pitch was very interesting to me. It was an up and in fastball that missed to make it 2 and 1. But that's where he's got to go tonight, Kershaw. He's got to rush these left handed hitters in with his fastball. That big breaking pitch missed. Count four. David Wright waiting on deck. Kershaw to Granderson. Line drive into the glove of Kendrick. There's where that shift paid off. Fourth member of our crew is Sam Ryan. Sam, how you doing tonight? Hey, Ernie. Well, Clayton Kershaw going on short rest in this one, but the Dodgers don't seem too concerned as catcher A.J. Ellis said this is what he prepares for. He's not putting himself at risk. He trains hard in the offseason. His training is still so regimented during the season as well, so he has a stamina to go on three days rest on short rest. He said he knows that Don Mattingly and pitching coach Rick Honeycutt will be keeping an eye on him, and he will stay in communication with them, guys. Thank you very much, Sam. Here's David Wright. Little tapper up the line, and that is a foul ball. Hey, Ronnie, about four days. Mostly psychological, isn't it? Less physical at this point. It's not physical now. The, the weather's beautiful. Uh, you feel as strong as an ox. It really just upsets your routine a little bit. You can see on three days rest, you know, only two starts. ERA beautiful. So even though he hasn't won a game, he's pitched well on three days rest. Terry Collins was talking today about his time with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was with their minor league system for a while. He was director of player development for a while. And he was there when Clayton Kershaw first emerged on the scene. And he was talking today about Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach, who said in passing one day, have you seen this kid Kershaw pitch? And, and he said, well, not yet. He said all Honeycutt did was kind of Roll his eyes and walk away like, man, you wait till you see this kid. <laughs> the 0 2 breaking pitch missed a ball and two strikes. Wright only has one hit in this series. It was a big one. Game one of the series, Pedro Baez coming in out of the bullpen, and Wright knocked in a couple of runs, made him dance two and two. Well, if it is a game plan by Kershaw, it's a good one. He's met hitters scoring 13 runs last night. Get him off the plate. Make him move their feet. Feel a little uncomfortable. Now it goes full again. You know, these are the kind of bats that the Mets preach. Three two counts. Make him work a little bit. Don't swing at the bad pitches. Make sure you get a good pitch to hit. Granderson did that the first time up. Hit a line drive right at Holly Kendrick. First base runner of the game is David Wright as he draws a one out walk. The most near and the at bat that. Wright took in the first game when he took 11 pitch at bat and walked. Long at bat here gets another walk. Here's Daniel Murphy who homered off Kershaw in the opener. He only had one home run in the regular season versus left handed pitching. And he's got one in this series off of Kershaw. He's three for 13 in the series. Kershaw with that little bluff. And then right scampered back. Ball and a strike to Murphy, who Statistically speaking, is the toughest guy to strike out in the major leagues. 
He has struck out three times in the series. Mets do not steal bases. Only 51. That's the lowest in the National League. Great pickoff move by Kershaw, and he has a slide step. There'll be no stealing today. 1-1 tried to check his swing, and he did. Confirmed by Alan Porter, third base umpire. Well, this is one of those quick movements, but you can see he doesn't break his wrist, and sometimes you get called on that because you have a quick movement. I don't think that's a swing. Chris Guccione, by the way, is calling the balls and strikes tonight. We'll run down the rest of the umpiring crew in just a second. The 2-1. Tried to check, and again, Porter says he did not go. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, real time, I think he might have went a little further on this one. This will be interesting to see. It always looks like a swing, but no, about the same. Well, I'll tell you, the Dodger bench erupted at Alan Porter when he called that a check swing. Yeah, I never really liked the idea when it says that the bat goes across the plate. Mm -hmm. Depends where you're standing in the batter's box, how long your stride is. Did you attempt to hit the ball? A little blooper. Right center. P.K. Hernandez there to make the play. Hernandez had some ground to cover and he got it done. Second out. What made that a more difficult play is P.K. Hernandez, as Cal pointed out yesterday, played very shallow. Looks like he's playing a little deeper in tonight's ball game. Crooked, the rest of the umpire in crew. Guccione behind the plate. Gary Cedars from at first. Chad Fairchild at second. Alan Porter. We've seen him a couple of times already at third. Jim Wolf down the left field line. And Greg Gibson on the right field line. Here's Joanna Cespedes, who electrified this place last night with a home run that. Well, what was it? Four something. <laughs> and it got out. Exit speed of about 115. A bullet to short. And that'll be the third out. So, a walk puts a Met on base. They can't move him. We head to the second.
Follow every pitch of the postseason with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Stay connected with highlights, replay reviews, scores, pitch tracking, live radio broadcasts, and more. Download the at bat app today. Justin Turner leads it off against Steven Matz as we move to the second here at City Field. Swinging at the first pitch and fouling it away. He's been taking a lot of the first pitches because I think the reputation is he goes up there and swings. But tonight he came out there saying, okay, you think I'm taking this one? <laughs> Not this time. Had a good swing out a little bit late. Matz into the wind. Here it comes. Rounded right back to him. One down. Matt 6 2, 200, reached up and gloved that and made the easy throw over. Well, if this sounds like a broken record, you see the Chevrolet pitch arsenal of Steven Matz. You see lots of fastballs. The changeup is outstanding. Told you he learned it from Frank Viola. Breaking ball occasional. But I've said this about almost every Mets pitcher of this series. Great athlete, good hitter. Breaking pitch to Corey Seager takes it for a strike. Seager did not start in game three. Did pick up a hit off the bench. Back in the starting lineup tonight for Don Mattingly. He's two for nine in his playoff baptism. You know, we're not going to see a hundred mile an hour fastball out of him, but the flames are lighting up the screen right now in 95. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one element to our graphics that Cal really digs, it's the flames at 95. <laughs> and there they are again. Well, Matt's falling behind. Three and one. Fastball count. Fastball hitter. Perfect pitch on 3 1. And he misses, and there's the first Dodger base runner. Injury plagued season for Yasiel Puig. Hamstrings have been. Barking at him. If you had to describe him as a hitter, you'd say as soon as he sees that first pitch coming, he wants to let it go. Only two at bats in this series. He struck out in both, and he was fooled there on the first offering from Matt, 0 and 1. So aggressive is an understatement with him? Yes. Limited to 79 games in the regular season. First start of this division series for Puig. Puig's reputation is a first ball fastball hitter. And you see two breaking balls starting him off. Now would be the time to go up with the fastball. You want to see the fastball make him swing at it up or bury a breaking ball. There it is. It's that pitch up you were talking about. You don't have to throw it inside. All you have to do is above the letters over the plate. Yeah, I think it's much more effective when it's not inside. From a hitter's perspective, your first instinct is to move out of the way. If it's over the plate, your first instinct is to swing at it. Again, there's an example there. Looks like it caught the box um, for a strike, but he's not going to swing at that. It doesn't look appealing when it's inside. It looks appealing when it's out over the plate. That fastball again. Just did stay alive. So that, that had the same height on the pitch right there, but it's a little bit out over the plate. He almost forces the hitter to go after. I think he's seen so many fastballs now. That curveball that he threw earlier to Kike Hernandez down and inside on that back foot is a good pitch. He's got to get it down. 
Popped him up. David Wright called off by Flores. Two down. So we go for three in this division series. As pitchers, we always complain about the broken bat hits. Well, that was a curveball down the middle that he got back. It was a mistake. Puig missed it. A little lucky right there. You know, those fly balls, I used to always think about landing in the middle of that infield grass right there. If you had a slow runner hit that and a fast runner on first base, that's the perfect one to let drop and then replace the runners. Here's A.J. Ellis, who very quietly has tied a Dodger franchise postseason record with an 11-game hitting streak. Didn't play last night. Guy who can always work counts, looks at a lot of pitches, and he's ahead 2 0. My favorite A.J. Ellis story is early in the tenure of Don Mattingly. He had to send him down, he called him in the office. A.J. Ellis said to him, You're making a huge mistake. I belong here, and I can help you. That's over for a strike, 2 and 1. And you ask Ellis who he uh, models his game after, who he has looked at as kind of a role model and it's been Mike Matheny the current manager of the St. Louis Cardinals whose team was dispatched today by the Chicago Cubs we congratulate Joe Madden and company and they make their way to the National League Championship Series waiting now to see who they're going to play they might know tonight 2 1 in the air to the gap in right center field. Granderson is right there, and that'll do it for the Dodgers in their half of the second. We are scoreless at City Field. Time for records and milestones presented by Jim Bean. Drink smart. Guys, we watched uh, 
the game here yesterday, but around baseball, those four games, 21 total home runs, postseason record, 61 runs scored in those four games. Cubs had six long balls. What a day of baseball it was yesterday in those those two ALDS series, both going the distance as they wind up tomorrow. For more records and milestones, go to bleacherreport.com. Travis Darno leads it off for the Mets against Clayton Kershaw. Darno went deep in game three. And that's into shallow right. Who wants it? Puig puts it in his glove. There was a little, just a moment of hesitation as Kendrick went back and Puig came in. Yasiel made the put out. Yeah, I don't think it's any uh, question that Clayton has made the adjustment and has thrown the ball inside a little bit more. This pitch right here beat him inside. And yeah, the uh, miscommunication there, it's too late in the season not to know each other. But Puig hasn't been out there all season. So the loud crowd noise, you want to make sure you call really early, really loud. Lucas Duda just two for 11 in the series has struck out seven times. I wonder if that's part of Clayton's uh, game plan here is to use the inner half of the plate. There's another one inside. That is what he is going to do tonight. It's obvious. Fastball, breaking ball. That surprises me a little bit. I thought his fastball percentage was a little higher. You know his breaking ball they include the curveball and the cutter slider so well, a cutter can be put in the category of a fastball yep can be but it seems more like a bigger slider to me from him no two is tapped foul over there by the Mets dug out 27 home run season for Duda with 73 runs batted in. Has not knocked in a run here in this series. It's that cutter slider against the left handers. He's not been able to control yet. We saw it against Murphy. We're seeing now against Duda. AJ Ellis with the signs. And Duda hangs in. Clayton Kershaw worked 232 and two thirds innings this season, the most in baseball by two thirds of an inning over Dallas Keuchel. And Duda goes down swinging for out number two here in the second. That's a nice short cutter right there. 91 miles an hour, about four miles off the fastball before that. Well, it's almost like he slowed down. Instead of trying to throw it so hard, he tried to make it more accurate. So, so far, I talked about controlling the left-handed hitters. They're all for three so far tonight. And now he faces Wilmer Flores, who's three for six against Kershaw in his career. Takes low and inside, one and oh. His first strikeout, normally you're used to seeing a lot of K's sprinkled through. No fastball inside on our pitch tracks inside, but getting that call so far. From Chris Cuccioni. Kershaw struck out 11 in his game one start of this series. That's off his foot, and it's a ball and two strikes. Interesting to me that Kershaw seems to be working at a meteor rate, and that the Mets haven't stepped out once. And no argument on that one right down the pipe for a call third strike. Kershaw strikes out the last two. We head to the third.
Our graphic artist Chris Nelson and Franklin Cow told me today, hey, you know it's Chevy Truck Month? Time to make a strong decision like choosing a Chevy Silverado. Chevrolet is proud to be the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Justin Ruggiano swings at the first pitch from Stephen Matz and fouls it away. Never thought of Franklin as a truck guy. But no, well, some of these guys surprise you. <laughs> Terry Collins talking earlier today about the, uh, I guess, the system for New York Mets pitchers and how they try to bring them along. And he, they say it's a lot of what Ray Miller used to teach work fast change speeds strike one and boy you're seeing that with Steven Matz tonight. Well I think that you know to have this this many talented arms and to develop them so when they get here they show the poise that they've showed in this shown in this postseason so far has been pretty remarkable. Ruggiano waiting on a one two. Way outside. Two balls and two strikes. I love the conversation about fastball command. Yeah, yeah. You know, teaching guys with good arms how to command that. On each side of the plate, up and down. Instead of trying to make them have two seamers or cutters, take their their skill or their God given talent, the fastball, and learn how to use it. Keep it simple. I mean, don't make it so complicated. Guys who throw 95 plus, if they can control it on both sides of the plate, that's enough. And they can move on from there. The 2 2. And he threw it past Ruggiano for the first out. Second strikeout for Steven Matz. What you like to see early in the game is the target given by a catcher to a young pitcher, and your pitcher hitting that target. We've seen it now on three or four different occasions with Matz the first time through this lineup. Yeah, that's a wonderful example of the high fastball that you can throw by him. You don't have to waste it up around the letters or go too high. There is a risk of making a mistake too low, but if you have confidence in putting it right there, it's very difficult to hit. Ball and a strike to Clayton Kershaw, who can handle the bat for a pitcher. Knocked in a couple of runs this year. Nine hits and 71 trips. He was 0 for 2 in game one. Oh, how do you do? A one and two. <laughs> so now he knows what everybody else feels like when he drops the hook on There you go. That's a good pitch to come back with. Once you buckle him and make him aware of that, the fastball in the outside corner looks a mile away. Just got a piece. And then it got a piece of Darno back there, too. Two balls and two strikes. Mats is the third pitcher in history to start a postseason game with no career losses. 4 0 this summer. Man, is he working fast. And look at Kershaw dumping one in the left for the first Dodger hit. Wide turn by Kershaw. And he's on with one out. He's frisky tonight, man. He's got a lot of energy. You saw him before the game bouncing around the dugout. Kind of had a little spring in his step as he came to the plate here in the third and then made the wide turn at first. How about fooled by that first breaking ball and then second one? He produces a base hit. You know, pitch selection comes from reading what happens in the previous uh, pitch. He was so late on the fastball away, barely fouled off. You don't want to bring a slower speed pitch back to him. We can get the bat hit to it. But a nice piece of hitting though. Stood right in there, pushed to the left center field. Started Hernandez with a change. He was way out in front, 0 1. He struck Hernandez out as he let off the game. Well, Don Mattingly has talked about Kike Hernandez, said someday he believes he's going to be an everyday player, not a guy who just plays in different positions. 423 against left handed pitching this season. He's got some savvy. Back to back change ups. 
And he's ahead 0 and 2. You know, in this game, you can be an everyday player and play a lot of positions. Yeah. I think Tony Phillips made that popular years ago. Played a lot of positions very well. Zobris now. Kershaw, short lead at first. Tap towards second. Murphy goes to second. They get one. Not a double play ball. And that's two down. I love that decision right there. You know who's running. You're going to get a force out. Keep the guy out of scoring position. Would have been easy to take the out at first base and let someone get in the scoring position. Let Kershaw get to second. But he knew he had a little time. Made a nice throw. And they got the shore out at second base. Here's Howie Kendrick. Been the Dodgers' hottest hitter in this postseason series. I can't help but think of the pickoff play over with the left hander in the next series we have. We have one that has trouble throwing over at first base. And that'll be a story. Hernandez big lead at first. And Kendrick takes the curveball over for a strike. 0 and 1. Well, the last time we did a Cubs game uh, with Lester, Lester did pick off a runner <laughs> over at first base. Might be getting more comfortable with that. No balls and two strikes. Kendrick homered in game three as the Dodgers tried to narrow that gap. Just did get over. They had to review it, make sure there wasn't fan interference. Still, the Dodgers lost that one 13 to 7. 0 2 pitch. Dangerous at any count, but protects with two. Matz has not shown much of a move to first base. Count one, two, maybe anticipating a breaking ball. Hernandez could try to swipe one. He's got a big lead. Many times you'll take a chance with two strikes on the hitter, especially with Kendrick. There he goes, rounded up the middle, and through for a base hit. Hernandez will hold it third. They're at the corners. With two down. Boy, Howie Kendrick continues to pound the baseball. Now surprised that the second baseman had the coverage on this ball right here. Because Kendrick can shoot the ball the other way, fastball. And Flores would have been covering. He might have had a chance to make that play. So many times uh, Kendrick is really good at inside out the ball, picking the ball the opposite way, covering the off speed pitch with two strikes. You got to make a decision on every pitch in the middle of the infield, and that's one I think they got backwards. Adrian Gonzalez has four runs batted in in this series, all but two out. Two down, runners at first and third in a scoreless game as we play in the third. That's a dangerous hitter right here. I always like thinking with uh, Adrian Gonzalez. Got jammed the first time up on a fastball. Didn't expect it to be in there that quick. Jam ground ball broke his bat. Little looper into center. That's going to fall for a hit, and the Dodgers are on the board. Can't say I fought with him really well on that time because he hit a breaking ball off the end of the bat for a bloop single to center field. No, but that's what Hernandez brings to this ball club. He brings some energy. He brings some speed and gets on base in front of these big hitters like Kendrick and Gonzalez. Here's that high breaking ball. Just hits it far enough. You see the frustration. 
on the face of the 24 year old as Gonzalez comes up with his fifth two out RBI. Dodgers have the lead and here is Justin Turner. Takes outside one and oh. Well his seventh start now is a postseason start for Matt's Terry Collins said before the game and all of his starts he's able he's been able to limit the damage. Needs to limit it here. That's a good point young pitchers tend to make the inning go a little longer. Veteran pitchers understand how to say okay one is not a bad thing on the board we're still in the game. They try to make the perfect young guys make try to make the perfect pitch fall behind two and oh and now they got to come into a hot hitter. Lined fair ball down the line and left. That's going to score one run. That's going to score two runs because here comes Gonzalez as Cespedes had trouble with it in left field. And it is a three nothing Dodger lead. Here's that 2 0 count line drive right down in the corner. Agon is running from first base here. The ball takes a weird hop off the wall, and Cespedes can't come up with a clean. Renicky, the third base coach, is thinking about holding him up, but when he sees the ball come away from Cespedes, he just keeps him going. Loved it, kicked it, and Gonzalez came all the way around from first to score. So an inning that began with a strikeout of Ruggiano, Clayton Kershaw singled, was forced at second on the fielder's choice by Hernandez, and then three straight hits, Kendrick, Gonzalez, and Turner, and it's a 3-0 game. Here's Corey Seager. Lost in that game yesterday where 20 runs were scored. Mets scored 13, but the Dodgers added seven. So they found their offensive shoes also. Remember, also in, in that game, as you see the action, Eric Goodell and Bartolo Colon loosening in the Mets bullpen. Dodgers jumped out 3 0. Mets answered with four of their own. This is going to wrap it up. But a productive inning for the Dodgers, who must win. Down 2 1 in the best of five. They score three here in the third.
National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. Here are the Dodger RBI guys from the top half of the third inning. One for Gonzalez, two for Turner. Corner infielders for L.A. Eight, nine, and one due for the Mets in the bottom half of the third inning. One Ligaris takes a strike from Clayton Kershaw. And if you thought Kershaw looked pumped up and ready to go and confident in this game, imagine what a three-run lead does for him. Mets hoping for some deja vu an inning later. After what happened in game three, Dodgers scoring three in the second, Mets four in the bottom half. And that all began with an infield hit by Ioannis Cespedes on a ball he beat out, hit to Jimmy Rollins. We're talking to Don Mattingly about that, and he said, My goodness, did you see the, the home to home to first times he was putting on? They had it as this ball is lofted into foul territory, and Seeger makes the play for the first out. They said the, the stopwatch times on that were three nine and a three seven that Cespedes has clocked to first. My goodness. It's a nice play by the rookie right here, Cal. Yeah, he takes a look down, finds out where the tarp is. He goes over there, makes a nice play. Uh, big, tall, long kid. Looked like the guy in purple was trying to stop the play. Now here's Steven Matz. He can handle the bat. Woo, look at that cut. He's about two days late, though. <laughs> look at in his in his first game. Okay, Cal, nitpick. <laughs> but this first game, he went three for three in his first start against the Reds. There's a little spinner over to Gonzalez for the second <laughs> out. Jeez, Cal. <laughs> a break. <laughs> Just an observation, <laughs> I defer to you, Iron Man. Believe me. Keep me in line, will you? You got to admit, it was a good cut. <laughs> it was a powerful cut. I'll give you that. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Here's Curtis Granderson with two down now in the third. Another fastball in. Kershaw angry that he didn't get it. Here's that Chevrolet pitch arsenal. When we talked about his uh, percentage of uh, surprising early on, he's actually establishing his fastball and establishing it in. Less of those cutters, more of the four seam fastball. Big breaking pitch missed. Two balls and a strike. Uh, what the, what's his pitch right here, Ronnie, before he gives the signal? 2 1 behind in the count. He's going to go the little cutter away. Try to keep it down. Yes, you're right. On the ground into the shift. Kendrick throws him out from the outfield grass. And that is a quick 1 2 3 inning for Clayton Kershaw. We head to the fourth. That's City Field.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Top half of the fourth. Dodgers on top, 3-0 in a game they have to have. And here is Puig. In the air to left. And all Cuban first out. Tweed flies to Cespedes. A moment ago, Sam Ryan with Terry Collins. Terry, I know you said during his bullpen session on Sunday he had electric stuff, but what do you see from Steven tonight? This could be in trouble. I mean, the first two innings he was very good. Last inning, you know, he hung a slider to Kershaw, and then he's made a couple a couple pitches in the middle plate, but he's throwing all right. I mean, it's been a while since he's been out there, and, we, you know, we got kind of some tight reins on him. He, he probably won't go much longer, but uh, uh, we got to get him some runs. But you say how much longer? How much? Well, he's going to be around 100 pitches tops. He's, the most he's thrown in the last month has been 88, so we're right. We, you know, he's if he can give us a couple more innings, we'll be okay. Thanks a lot, Terry. You bet. Lined in the left field, A.J. Ellis with the single. And we talked about having an 11 game postseason hitting streak tied with Carl Crawford for the franchise high. And now A.J. Ellis owns it outright. A one out single here in the fourth. Those really intelligent catchers who might not be great hitters can think along with the opposing pitcher better than anyone probably in the lineup. Here's Justin Ruggiano. When we were talking about Kershaw working quickly. One of the reasons he works quickly is because A.J. Ellis is in sync putting the right fingers down at the right time. Let's him get into a rhythm. Ruggiano turns on that, but it's foul to left. Dodgers drafted Ruggiano back in 2004, and then he was traded to Tampa Bay in 2006. Been with uh, Miami, been with the Cubs, been with Seattle in this year, and now back with the Dodgers. And there was likely a time this summer when the last thing on his mind was being on a playoff roster. Justin's taking a couple good swings here. Yeah. Queek was on a couple of pitches too. Just missing the pitch and flying out the left. Ron Renicky, good hands down there. <laughs> the lefty. One of the great guys in baseball. When he was let go by the Brewers, I'm sure his phone rang off the hook. Good baseball guy, good yep. student of the game. Ruggiano couldn't catch up to that 93 mile an hour fastball. And that's two down. He strikes out for the second time tonight. Got him on the same pitch, the fastball up, Cal. You know, that one had a little cutting action and stayed in a little bit. Started out over the middle of the plate. Kind of tied him in. Now here's Clayton Kershaw who singled his first time and that was the first Dodger hit. Got their rally started. He would be forced at second but. When the Dodgers strung together three straight hits later in that inning. They got on the board. There's a bouncer over the mound. Kershaw hustling down the line. Cannot beat the throw from Flores. Joanna Cespedes due up in the bottom half of the fourth.
A look at the upcoming MLB postseason schedule tomorrow on FS1. Be by the set. A couple of game fives in Toronto and Kansas City. And then Thursday, if we need it, we'll be at Chavez Ravine for game five between the Mets and the Dodgers. You see uh, not listed there is anything involving the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals because the Cubs won that series today at Wrigley. 2-3-4, doing the bottom half of the fourth for the Mets. Trying to do something about a 3-0 Dodger lead. You watch A.J. Ellis. Every hitter that comes to the plate, they always end up with a smile on their face because A.J. finds a way to, to make him crack a smile. Probably said, hey, you know, I got a... Uh, 12 game postseason hitting streak now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dodger record, by the way. Yeah, how you go? <laughs> Breaking ball stayed up. Whenever you watch Clayton, when he looks towards the bench in frustration, it's because he can't get that curveball over yet. That's the next piece of the puzzle. He gets that over, look out. The short. Well, that ball had some spin on it, didn't it? And Seeger threw him out. <laughs> you, you've been there, Cal. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the ball is uh, jammed and comes off with a little spin. Sometimes it hits the pine tar to create a little bit more spin. And it hits the dirt up there. It takes a little tricky hop. Let's look and see if we can see it. Yeah, it goes dead right. And he's in a good position. He's got his body in a good position. So when he catches it, he still doesn't have to take a step and makes a nice throw to first. He does make uh, all the plays look easier. He sets up early, catches it, got a good arm. Daniel Murphy waits on the 0-1, and there's a drive. Deep right field. Puig is back. That ball's gone. Daniel Murphy, for the second time in this series, takes Clayton Kershaw deep. Cespedes. Ninety five miles an hour from Kershaw, a pitch after and Murphy took him for a ride. And ninety five right on the inside corner. Followed by the sharp breaking pitch, 0 and 2. That's the one you were talking about him finding that big breaking ball. That was a cutter that stayed inside. Stayed out of the plate. 93 miles an hour, a little bit of a cutter on it. Tap back to the mound. Kershaw throws him out. Just a few moments ago, Sam Ryan spoke with Dodgers manager Don Mattingly. Don Clayton on short rest seems almost energized tonight. What are you seeing from him? No, yeah, he looks good. Uh, I think he seems to be fairly relaxed, a little excited before the game. Uh, he's throwing the ball good. It's coming out good right now. With what's at stake tonight, Don, any limitations as far as pitches on him? Uh, we're definitely going to still take care of him. Uh, we're not just going to abuse him. But it's a pretty much normal start for him. And uh, we'll just see how he's going. Thanks a lot, Donnie. Okay. 
And obviously that interview taking place between innings. Moments before Daniel Murphy hit the solo home run here in the fourth. It's the second time in this series that he's connected in the fourth inning. Get one home run all season against left-handed pitching. Out of his 14, he has two in the post, both against Kershaw. Go figure. Travis Darno, big cut, 0-2. Good fastball on the first pitch inside. Darno swung at it, and it comes back with a cutter, a little bit up and in. Same result. The fourth inning has been an Achilles heel for Clayton Kershaw. Considering the year he had, that means every other inning is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I interpret that as meaning the uh, he sets down the first nine in order. It's the second time around that they take a chance on. Howled off into the stands right over the Mets dugout. Daniel Murphy getting the Mets on the board here in the fourth. And the one two. Garneau goes down swinging to end the fourth. But the New York Mets get on the board. Daniel Murphy going deep. It's three one. Back here at City Field as we move to the fifth. Dodgers on top 3 1 in a game they must win to force a game five. Steven Matz in tight to Kike Hernandez. It's a ball and a strike. Hernandez, the Dodgers leadoff hitter here in game four.
tried to go inside up and in and then comes back with a change up. Hernandez struck out his first time reached on a fielder's choice in the third and scored the first Dodger run. Bartolo Colon. Who was up earlier. Back up in the Mets pen. 3 1. Lined into center field for a base hit. He takes off. Had that base stolen. Howie Kendrick hits the ball in the middle. He just keeps going. Shade under 19 miles an hour. And Justin Turner coming through after Gonzalez had. <laughs> and you add it all up, you get a three run third inning. The Mets getting a solo home run out of Daniel Murphy to make it 3 1. We didn't have we didn't have stat cast on Agon, did we? No, Adrian Gonzalez kind of stumbled in. He's not used to running from first to home. Saw Dan Worthen out there to have a word with his young pitcher, Stephen Matz. Who has thrown 70 pitches. And here's Howie Kendrick. Well, Matz will at least get two more hitters. For a couple of reasons. One, he's got Kendrick now and then Adrian Gonzalez, the left-hander. But also we saw last night Adrian Gonzalez had a home run off Cologne and owns Cologne his career numbers. Down even a ball and a strike. Stephen Matz a feel good story a Long Island product. Trying to pitch the Mets. Into the National League Championship Series, but been a struggle. Giving up three in the third. Behind two and one with Kike Hernandez at first. Two balls and two strikes. Just trying to gut it out and keep them where they are. Wouldn't chase on the 2 2 and the count full. Interesting, the crowd last night with the introductions of lineups, the lineups was bounced past into a venomous state with the booing of Utley, but the crowd a little quieter than it was last night. To right field, Granderson backpedals and makes the play one down. Well, I think the situation last night, too, Ron, was that. Yeah. Once that game started getting out of hand, it was 10 3. And then it was, okay, what are we going to do with ourselves here for the next five innings? Oh, I know what we can do. It's yellow chase Utley. <laughs> and they did. Hey, baseball fans, follow the postseason right from your phone with Team Stream by Bleacher Report. Get the latest MLB news, scores, and highlights all in the palm of your hand. Download Team Stream on the App Store or Google Play today. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. Knocked in a run his first time in that three run third. Up the middle. Gloved by Flores, who throws across for the second out. Hernandez to second. That's two times now for Adrian. A jam shot up the middle that Flores has made a nice play on. Comes across, knows he has time. It's a nice, easy throw across the diamond. First base open, and Justin Turner is going to get the free pass. I was going to say, watching Flores bend over for that ball, not so easy when you're six four. But I guess Cal, you know a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so easy for me to bend over either. <laughs> Of course, Flores in there because Ruben Tejada suffered the broken leg in that Chase Utley play. 
And what the Mets did is bring up Matt Reynolds, who has <clears throat> not played a big league game, has not played in this series yet, but they had him down there at St. Lucie and had told him before the series started, look, you're down there, stay ready, because if we do have an injury in the middle infield somewhere, you'd be the guy who gets the call. Where's number 56? And uh, said he called his mom and dad and said, told his dad, I'm going to the big leagues. He was thrilled, gave the phone to his mom and started crying and hung up on him. <laughs> Seeger. <laughs> Foul. It was a yeah, great moment in their household. But then when they talked later, he said, Mom, you know you hung up on me after I made that call. They're here at the ballpark last night for game three. Seeger very aggressive on that first pitch. And he takes a strike on two. Big hitter here for Steven Max. Singer seems to be the best when he's behind in the count. He's hitting 394 when he's behind in the count in the regular season. Ron and Lori, Matt's parents, among those standing here at City Field, that missed. Ball and two strikes. You're ahead in the count. If you're going to throw a breaking ball here, Make sure you get it down. Dodgers lead from first and second. Strike three called to Corey Seager. The Dodgers put two on, but do not score. Middle of the fifth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Lucas Duda has 12 at-bats 
in this series. He struck out eight times and he leads it off here in the fifth against Clayton Kershaw who struck him out his first time. Got that big Dodger shift on and. I think Adrian Gonzalez is the only guy actually in the dirt right now. <laughs> so I guess there's no chance at all of him pushing this bunt. Over there towards third. You may be right Cal. <laughs> Going to. Especially now. You know what I find interesting about Kershaw from the first game. You've already mentioned that he's pitched in a lot. But he's using that four seam fastball more. It's like he's going after the hitters more aggressive. Like Kershaw with that distinctive delivery and Ron we touched on it the other yeah. night the way that the way that right foot will hover for just a moment. I love it. It's that little delay that makes it tough for the hitter to pick up and it's almost like a, a kid when you have your bike and you're putting down the kickstand. Another strikeout of the Mets first baseman. Strikeout two three for the first out. Watch it. As soon as he stops, puts that kickstand down and then goes. I think that's got to upset a hitter's timing, Cal. Yeah, I mean, without going to home plate, you really don't know what it feels like. But there are a lot of pitchers that stride out a little further. That's shorter on the ball. That that has to be that delay has to make him more deceptive with that 95. It'll appear like it's 98 or 99. I'm sure at some point someone in Dallas, one of his coaches said, you can't do that, son. <laughs> Thank God he didn't listen. I've noticed too, it seems like his cutter is a little tighter tonight, especially to the lefties. A little shorter, a little harder. A ball and two strikes to Wilmer Flores. And you talk about those Dallas days and play with Matthew Stafford, who's now the Detroit Lions quarterback. It's the center, right? Jordan Walden. Yeah, they're over at Highland Park High School. Made Flores look bad, two down. That's that hard, short. Cutter or yeah. slider. Like backdoor cutter, though, right? That's a really small little breaker. It starts on the outside, tries to break into the outside corner. Totally fooled Flores on that one. Kershaw has struck out the last three Mets he's faced, and here is Ligaris. Little tapper, and that's a foul ball. Well, it didn't it didn't appear to come off his foot from my angle. When we show, showed a shot of the bullpen, we've seen Cologne. Could we see Jacob Degrom in the bullpen? Yes, we did. Well, we said it, said he wouldn't bring him back early to start a ball game. But he didn't say anything about relieving in the ball game. No, in fact, he left open the possibility yeah. when we talked to him yesterday, and he said, "No, we're not bringing him back." But not saying that he couldn't bridge somewhere in there. Could he just be thrown on the side? No. No, not 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 in this kind of game. Michael Kadire has a bat. He would pinch hit for Mats. If Lagaris can reach. The two one line base hit. Lagaris with the turn at first. And he's aboard with two down. Only the second hit for the Mets. The other was a home run by Daniel Murphy. Good low fastball at 94 miles an hour. He goes down and hits a rocket to left center field.
Mets looking for a big two out here here. They're 0 for 10 with men on in this series against Clayton Kershaw. Kadire waiting on Kershaw and that is foul down the third base line. Kadire hit 244 before the All-Star break, 302 after it. He started game one. DeGrom comes into this game in relief. That will put Noah Syndergaard on proper rest to pitch on Thursday. If it goes that far. The 0 1. No balls and two strikes. There is Noah Syndergaard who pitched game two. And there's DeGrom. We'll give you some days off, but you know it's October. We gotta have you now. So does the Grom out there surprise you? No, no, it doesn't because in this game you cannot afford to give up any more runs against the way the Kershaw is thrown. That's your best chance of holding it at 3-1, and you only have to score a couple to get it even. And not and not given the fact that. That Terry had broached the, the subject yesterday and said, you know, look, I, I'm not saying I'm going to bring him up back to start, but I'm saying, you know, it, it's a possibility you might see him out of the pen. 3-1 game, too. Breaking pitch. Got him swinging. Three strikeouts in the inning, along with the single by Lagares. We head to the sixth.
Let's take a look at tonight's Playmakers presented by Chrysler. The Chicago Cubs in the National League Championship Series having knocked off the St. Louis Cardinals in four. Hit 10 home runs in the series and six of those in game three. And their first time clinching a series at Wrigley Field. Have they left the field yet there at, <laughs> Man, at Wrigley? Do we have an update? <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it's a lot to ask of a 42 year old. Two innings yesterday and back there on the mound today. We are in the top of the six, zipping right along here in game four. Yasiel Puig waits on Cologne and takes a strike. Two and one. Yeah, Cologne working in his third game. Two, three, and four. Struck out the side last night. And it's two and two to Puig. Who has popped a short and fly the left. Still looking for his first hit of the series. Two two on the way and Puig fouls that away. Dominantly staying away trying to bring that uh, two seamer back to the outside corner. Looks like he's going to try to do that again. Big, big cut comes up empty one down. I don't know if his intention was to go the outside corner. Catcher sitting up on the outside corner or to elevate. That's the place that uh, you consider Puig's weakness with two strikes. Cal, how does he do it at 42? I don't know. I only played to 41. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. He's got a wonderful arm. Ron, could you switch spots with Cal? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just reinvented himself. It was amazing to me. Um, Frank Tanana threw the ball really, really hard like Nolan Ryan. And then he had an injury, and then all of a sudden he figured out how to change speeds, how to go in, go out. Um, he say? was able to pitch a long time. I what? think Bartolo is the same yeah. example. He had a fastball that was straight as an arrow, and it was hard. It was a short arm four seamer. He's figured out how to do something else. And that ball that comes back comes back a long way. It's almost like a wiffle ball breaks so much. Well, uh, he and Tanana are different. What was the line about Tanana? He threw 90 in the 70s and 70s in the 90s. <laughs> uh, but the thing about Cologne is you're right. What he's done with the two seamer is he has controlled the break on his sinking fastball. He's able to control it inside the lefties. Inside the righties. It's really uh, unbelievable to watch when you think about it. 42. First time in his career he's pitched on back to back days. Andre Ethier will pinch hit here in the sixth. For Ruggiano, who got the start against the lefty Mats. And Ethier swings right through at 0 and 1. Ethier was very impressive during batting practice today, hitting many balls up at the upper deck in right field. Well, quickly, he's behind 0 and 2. Ethier three for ten in this series. And behind in the count, a ball and two strikes. Here it comes. Nibbled and missed two and two. The strikeout pitch for the left handers is that comebacker that he throws right at the their hip. Let's see if he tries it against Ethier. No, back outside.
We already talked about earlier that uh, Adrian Gonzalez owns him. And the style of hitter is Adrian Gonzalez will dive towards the outside part of the plate. You got Ethier that seems to come off a little bit, and that tail of the ball makes him susceptible to the outside pitch. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And Ethier. That was close. Three and two. On our pitch tracks, it shows you the remarkable consistency of Bartolo Colon, even now at 42. He's putting the ball right where he wants to. And good job by Chris Cuccioni, the home plate umpire. Got a perfect eyeball on it. Look at those circles. The 3 2 is lined into the seats in a right foul. I didn't catch the speed of that. Was that a changeup? No, he can't try to come inside. Took a little off, maybe. Cologne into the wind again, the 3 2. And he strikes out Ethier. He tipped it into the mid of Travis Darno. Two strikeouts in the inning for Cologne. We head to the bottom half of the six. New York Mets have managed two hits off Clayton Kershaw as we move to the bottom half of the sixth one of those left the park by Daniel Murphy accounting for the only run the Mets have scored they trail 3 1 Kershaw trying to pitch the Dodgers into a game five in this National League Division Series Curtis Granderson fouls off the first pitch 0 1 Andre Ethier 
who pinch hit for Ruggiano in the top half of the inning stays in the game and left. Again, Granderson, first pitch hunting. Curveball for Kershaw has been effective at times, but he still hadn't found that exact release point. It's almost like it's been better against righties than lefties. Usually, when you're a left handed pitcher and you've got as big a breaking ball as Kershaw does, you aim it right at the left handed hitter's right shoulder. That's where you want to start it to break it out over the plate. We saw Kershaw get buckled by a similar breaking ball. Three Dodger infielders on the right side. And Granderson watches that breaking pitch. Two and two. Granderson found the left center field gap, and it's a huge left center field gap last night. And Kershaw strikes him out. To lead off the sixth. Official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. Granderson's been a tough out in this series. That's a big out for Kershaw here in the sixth. But he stayed with that curveball. Three times he went to it until Granderson finally bit. Here's David Wright. Walked his first time, grounded out to short in the fourth. Now one for 11 in the series. But it was the Mets captain who came up so big in game one. After Kershaw had been lifted in the seventh. And he delivered off Baez, knocking in two runs. Kershaw continues to make good pitches to right. Remember in the first game, he used more of that cutter. She was more of that straight four seam fastball into right. Yeah, he reached out for a little extra. 96 on the last one on the inside edge. Pitch number 79 by the left hander. Two and one. He threw 113 in six and two thirds in the opener. That was pretty. Two and two. Fastball in three different times and then comes back with that backdoor cutter. Pretty pitching. That's foul. Down the left side. Stays two and two. David is at his best. When he is trying to hit the ball in the gaps left center right center and that's why Kershaw is rushing him inside trying to tie him up. Breaking pitch strike three called and right knew it. Here's Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services the only run Kershaw is allowed. On that 101.8 mile an hour exit velocity solo homer by Daniel Murphy, who comes to the plate now with two down in the sixth. The last six outs recorded by Kershaw have all been strikeouts. Ellis is telling Murphy get in the box and be ready. Here it comes. There's a little argument right now between Murphy and Ellis. Murphy loves to talk to the umpire and I think AJ Ellis had enough of it. That's interesting. Uh, there were times when I felt that the catcher was talking to the umpire too much and you have to you have to interrupt the conversations yeah. and disagree yeah. just so you can your your opinion could be heard against his. Murphy and Kershaw ready. Here comes the 1 0. Count even a ball and a strike. Hey. 
Bruce Shaw, who saw his postseason record fall to one and six in the opener, trying to get the Dodgers to a game five, and there you saw the give and take between Murphy and Ellis. And Guccione saying all everything. Here we go. That's in the air to center. Plenty of room for Kike Hernandez. That's six strong innings for Clayton Kershaw. Dodgers lead at 3-1 as we head to the seventh. Well, some fast traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge. The 2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. Top half of the seventh inning. Bartolo Colon still on there for New York, and Clayton Kershaw leads it off for the Dodgers. He lays down a bunt foul up toward third. When well, you watch people, veterans like Clayton Kershaw, Zach Greinke, I can think of Adam Wainwright. When they pitch, they feel like they're one of the nine athletes on the field. They feel like a ball player, not just a pitcher. A couple of years ago, Kershaw, opening day, pitches a complete game, hits a home run to beat the Giants. Little League game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The 1 1 from Cologne. Steven Matz, the Long Island product, started and went five. Dodgers got to him for three runs in the third. In the air to center. And Ligaris puts it away for the first out. I think that's the only time I want my pitcher to make an out. Don't want him on the bases. Got a little bit of a lead. Just go down and sit down. Get ready to pitch. <laughs> Here he was trying to bump <laughs> for a hit. That's right. <laughs> 
as Jonathan Neese on the left, the left hander, and Tyler Clipper on the right. Ricky Bonus, the bullpen coach. Don't you think that's a little overblown? You know, uh, how, how tired do you get when you get on the base? You don't get that tired, but you know what makes you tired, uh, uh, Cal, is that you don't run the bases a lot. So being on the bases, it just makes you kind of mentally weary because you don't want to make a mistake out there and look kind of silly getting caught off on a line drive. Or Both those guys you mentioned earlier, yeah. they like to be in the game. They like to be competitive. I agree. I'd, I'd almost argue that it fuels them. They're contributing in the game both both ways. A ball and a strike to Kike Hernandez, the Dodgers leadoff hitter. In the right field, base hit. Now, of course, there's a lot of pitchers that I wouldn't want them to be on the bases. <laughs> you don't want them to be a bat. The guys you mentioned, it's a nice base hit with the right field here. You know, a couple of days ago when Don Mattingly inserted Kike Hernandez into the lineup, he got a lot of flack in Los Angeles. And Hernandez has been a real spark plug. Oh, he's been so valuable for Don Mattingly this season. When Howie Kendrick got hurt, he played some second base. When Jock Peterson wasn't hitting, he played some center field. He could fill in it short. Hitting leadoff tonight in an elimination game. He's got two hits. He's reached three times and he has scored a run. It's a little dangerous part of the game for the Mets. Kendrick has been pretty much one of the best hitters to go with Turner. Throw over by Cologne to keep. The runner Hernandez close. This will be his last hitter, you would think. We already mentioned his numbers against Adrian Gonzalez are not good. Cologne's numbers. Could very well see Jonathan Neeson here in the lefty lefty. I mentioned Clippert also warming up. And Clippert's had some success against left handed hitters as well. Hernandez stole his first base in this series. Big stolen base was running on the pitch and Kendrick hit a base it up. He's got a big lead. Looks like he wants to run here. Well the one thing Mattingly can do now with a couple run lead 1 0 count Kendrick is a great hit and ball hit and run guy. You going to go back to coverages in the middle of the infield. What choices do you make right here if you're suspecting hit and run. I'm shortstop. I'm taking the coverage. There he goes. Hit and run was on. Rounded to second. There's one. There's two. Murphy with the tag of Hernandez and throws on the first to get Hendrick. They're stretching at City Field.
It is time to go inside the booth presented by Insurance, proud partner of Major League Baseball. Ernie Johnson, Cal Ripken Jr., and Ron Darling. Boy, we saw Clayton Kershaw before the game in the dugout, bouncing around, full of energy. And he's been Clayton Kershaw tonight here in game four. He really has, but this is the mountain to climb. He's leading by two runs, but in the seventh inning of his last three postseason starts, he's allowed 11 runs. That's what he's got to stay away from here tonight. New York Mets with a chance to clinch tonight if they can beat Kershaw. But they have managed just one run to this point. Daniel Murphy took him deep in the fourth inning, which is what he also did in game one of this series at Dodger Stadium. And it was the seventh inning that was crucial in that opener when the Mets were able to chase Kershaw and David Wright was able to deliver with a couple of runs batted in. There in the seventh, Yoannis Cespedes will lead it off. Then it's Travis Darno and Lucas Duda. The Chicago Cubs have already punched their ticket to the National League Championship Series. Congrats to Theo Epstein and Joe Madden, the city of Chicago. And the Ricketts family. been quite a story all year. <laughs> Here's Cespedes. He put one in orbit in game three. No balls in one strike. And Kershaw's handled him the whole series. And he couldn't be hotter right now. Feeling good. It's Chris Hatcher on the left. Luis Avilan on the right. Babylon pitched last night. Hatcher's been lights out pitching in the first two games in relief. Breaking pitch up the line. Kershaw can't make the play. Cespedes is on to lead off the seven. Now Clayton has not pitched well in the seventh inning like I just mentioned, 11 runs. But it's been a lot of little stuff that has happened also. Some errors, some misplays, some tops, some swinging bunts. And he can't not get down to get that one. Well, I tell you what, he knew he didn't have much time. Sessman started to rally off with an infield single yesterday and flew down the line. So that play right there, Kershaw was going after it really quick because he knew the pressure of Sessman's speed. He gets out of the box. Here he goes. Well, we'll never know because he didn't feel it and make the throw, but that's a tough chance even if he feels it cleanly. Here's Darno. But you're right, Ronnie. Uh, when things have, have gone bad for Clayton in the postseason, they've been little things like those things, like a bloop, like a throw over the cutoff man's head that allows the back runner to advance and then a blue hit. Or in the case of game one, it was three walks in the seventh inning that finally had Don Mattingly go to the mound and get him. Darno is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Cespedes has his lead at first. So you know if you're the Mets and you get a runner on, one swing could tie everything up. Yeah, Stop. I wouldn't expect Cespedes to be running either. Yeah. He's going to stay close to first base and hope somebody hits a home run. Darno did in game three. In the air behind first. That'll be easy for Adrian Gonzalez in foul territory. One down. Comes a guy who is due. Duda. Lucas Duda. Two strikeouts tonight. Two for 13 in the series with nine K's. Justin Turner, the third baseman over there in the hole on the right side. Corey Seeger. 
the shortstop, the only Dodger on the left side. That's in the air, but playable. Edge of the track for Hernandez, and that's two down. Boy, better than 44,000 trying to will that ball in the gap. Wouldn't work. Tonight, Wilmer Flores is over two with two punch outs. Coming in, he had pretty good numbers against Kershaw. Kershaw's handling pretty well tonight. Just going over the scouting report one more time. Two outs, huge out here. Flores has got some pop. Sixteen home runs, fifty nine runs batted in in the regular season. Flores, two for six in this series, has struck out twice tonight. Tried to check his swing, and Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, said he did not go. Kershaw sitting on 92 pitches and on a 3 1 lead here in the seventh. They're going to ask again. Same response, 2 0. Yeah, I don't think this was a swing either. But what it tells me is he's gearing for the fastball a little bit. Normally you don't see the, you see the check swing on the breaking ball when you're fooled on a pitch. Mets are looking for their first hit with a runner on base versus Kershaw. 0 for 13. Coming with a little cutter inside here. To third. Look at the stop by Turner. Throws across. And he got him. Blue star play to end the seventh by Justin Turner on a hot shot. Loves it, gathers, and throws a strike. We're heading to the eighth.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Upcoming MLB postseason schedule tomorrow. Pair of game fives on FS1. Rangers are in Toronto. Astros are in Kansas City. Man, I'm still that comeback by the Royals to stay alive in that series was vintage Kansas City. And if we need it, Thursday, Mets and Dodgers in game five. We head to the eighth here in game four. Dodgers trying to stay alive. Tyler Clippard is the third Mets pitcher, and he faces Adrian Gonzalez. He was acquired from Oakland on July 27th. His first 20 games lights out for the Mets. Since then, it's been a struggle for Clippard. So a big inning here. Gonzalez has knocked in a run. Part of that three run Dodger third. That's where they did all their damage. Meantime, Clayton Kershaw has been spectacular. Did give up the home run to Daniel Murphy in the fourth, but has only allowed three hits. Nobody passed first base. In the air behind third, David Wright over in foul territory, and he squeezes it for out number one. Big out for Clippard. Nice sequence right there. Two changeups. Got a really good changeup on the outside part. Shook to a fastball in. And jammed Adrian from the pop fly to David Wright. It's the third time that Adrian Gonzalez has been jammed in this game. Clippard worked two thirds of an inning. In relief of Jacob DeGrom in the opener, gave up a couple of hits and a run. We've been talking so much about Justin Turner's offense. Can't forget that play he just made in the bottom of the seventh. He's knocked in two of the Dodger runs, and that was a dandy to end the bottom half of the seventh inning. One and one. He had been shading the line a little bit, not necessarily guarding line, but shading it on that cutter that comes in from Clayton. Good reaction to his left. Good catch, good throw. Turner, a former Met, trying to keep that champagne on ice and give the Dodgers a chance back at their place on Thursday. Never know whose leg kick is bigger. The pitcher or Turner's when he's hitting. In the air to center field. Hit it right on the button, but also hit it right at Lagaris for the second out. Iron Man, how old were you the first time you went to the postseason? Twenty-two. Uh, yeah, so you got Seeger, who's twenty-one. So what's what's going on in that mind, uh, first time around? In fact, well, you had more time in the bigs going into the playoffs than he did. It was the month of September. Look at David Wright reaching over the railing to make that play. One, two, three inning. And right ends it in style. I'll get your answer when we come back on here, man. <laughs>
play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation, making play opportunities available and fun for everybody. To learn more, go to playball.org. Changes for the Dodgers. Chris Hatcher is the new pitcher. Jimmy Rollins is the new shortstop. Corey Seager moves from short to third. Justin Turner out. And Michael Conforto is going to pitch hit for Juan Lagares to lead it off here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Hatcher pitched in game two, had a couple of strikeouts. They asked him, he's another converted a catcher to a reliever. Asked him to use all of his pitches. He got in the stretch where he was all hard, hard fastball, hard slider. Now he uses all four pitches. Conforto homered in game two off Zach Greinke, a line drive off the foul pole at Dodger Stadium. Two run game. In the air to right center field. Puig is over. Says he's got it. And he does. One down. And Terry Collins again going to the bench. Kelly Johnson will pinch hit with one down here in the eighth. So Clayton Kershaw goes seven on short rest, throws 94 pitches. Well, we said in the open, why not and why not tonight? And he delivered. A ball and a strike. Johnson behind a ball and two strikes. It's a pretty smooth 97 and 98. <laughs> With Kenley Jansen waiting in the wings for the ninth. Or more. Or maybe the eighth. Or part <laughs> of the eighth. <laughs> Kelly Johnson won at bat in the series. He's 0 for 1. And Hatcher wants a new baseball. The 1 2. Stay down low. Count even. Two balls and two strikes. Good change up. 88 miles an hour, about 10 miles off. Well, an hour off his fastball. And we'll see it again. And he gets Johnson swinging for the second out of the eighth. Statcast. The play by Justin Turner. Great reaction on a hard hit ball to end that inning. I love that. We only show on the exit velocity on home runs. That shows you that at over 100 miles an hour, Turner had to make that play. Top of the order now in Curtis Granderson. Turner was so good defensively, they took him out for the city. <laughs> Not to mention the two runs batted in and that three run third.
Thatcher worked in game one and game two has pitched a couple innings in this series. And hasn't allowed anything struck out three coming in and added Kelly Johnson to that list. Here in the eighth. Up and away two and one. Again just a two run game a base runner brings the tying run to the plate. Strike. So you think Don Mattingly got all he could get out of Clayton Kershaw on short rest in this one? Well, he told our Sam Ryan, he said, we're going to protect our our best asset, in Clayton Kershaw. I would have sent him out for the eighth. Randerson draws a two-out walk. And David Wright represents the tying run as he steps to the plate. Here in the eighth. Now, I know I talk about pitch selection and when you're trying to manage a game from behind, but the 2 1 pitch to Granderson was a changeup. Yeah. He lays off of it, goes 3 1, and then can't get a fastball over. And Curtis with 98, is trying. With 98 miles in, uh, an hour, you wonder why he doesn't challenge him there. And Curtis is trying to work the count, he's trying to get on base. Don Mattingly. Is going to go to the bullpen. We talked about Kenley Jansen being ready for the ninth and maybe more. It's maybe more time. <laughs> we'll be back to City Field right after this. Back here at City Field, big spot. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Dodgers trying to protect a three to one lead. And the tying run at the plate in the person of the Mets captain, David Wright. Kenley Jansen, the closer, has eight four out saves in his career. And he's trying to get the Dodgers to a game five. David Wright is 0 for 6 with four K's against Kenley Jansen. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Walked in the first, grounded out in the fourth, called out on strikes in the sixth against Kershaw. Granderson with the lead at first. Two out. There goes Granderson. 
And he'll have it stolen without a throw. Well, huge jump, and I don't know why you don't try to at least defense this play because all you got to do is pick up a run here. Yeah, I don't understand why either. Right? Many times the closer doesn't worry about slowing himself down, or I mean speeding himself up. He wants to be slow, and he wants to have a good velocity of the plate. But 1-1. One, one. Jansen ahead, a ball and two strikes. Chris Hatcher came on in relief to start the inning, retired the first two hitters, Conforto on a fly ball to Puig, and he struck out Kelly Johnson before walking Granderson. That brought Don Mattingly out. That brought Kenley Jansen in and brought David Wright up. One and two the count. Tried to bust him inside. Two and two. Right with two big ribbies in the opener. When the Mets went to Dodger Stadium and took game one. Trying to deliver here in game four. He had a good swing, but I was on that high fastball, but it's the one you want you have to make him bring him down. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be cutting away from you. A good approach, right center field, which is a normal David Wright approach. We'd love to hit the ball out of the ballpark, but a base hit gets you one closer. Outfield defense almost playing on the warning track. The base hit definitely scores the run. 44,000 on their feet here at City Field. And Wright, who has had some quality at bats, doesn't have great numbers in the series, but Manny has battled time and again in this series. The rally caps are out. That rally cap about a size and a half too small, <laughs> but that doesn't matter when it's a rally cap. The ground back on the bench. Randerson with a lead at second. Two out, then a count of two balls and two strikes to David Wright. Jansen to the plate. Oh, and look at A.J. Ellis. And they ask for help. And Cedarstrom says he did not go. A.J. Ellis saying that it hit Wright's back. He's saying it's a foul tip and into the glove. I couldn't see a deflection, can you? Hard to tell. Sometimes you can hear it go in the catcher's glove, where it's not clean and it sounds like a foul tip. Three balls and two strikes. Inside, ball four, two on. AJ Ellis still talking about that foul tip. I think it's definitely a check swing, but does it hit off the end of the bat while he's checking it? Boy. To me, it looked like it tipped the bat. I was looking at the same replay and it looked like it didn't. <laughs> That's how close it was. I just always think that a catcher, when he reacts like A.J. Ellis did, he's not going to react this way because he's trying to deep someone. I would think he'd react this way because he felt like he did. Difficult call. All the noise. Umpires behind the plate count on hearing that double sound. The click of the bat and then into the glove. Can't hear it with this crowd. Back-to-back -back walks to Granderson and David Wright. 
And here's Daniel Murphy, who took Kershaw deep in the fourth inning. There's a strike from Jackson. 0 and 1. Not a lot of at bats against Jansen, but still one for seven. Kenley Jansen's the kind of pitcher that nobody hits. For Mets fans, yeah. The 0 1. Count even. And Cespedes is on the on deck circle to say, give me a chance. One ball and two strikes. How rare was that walk by Ken Kenley Jansen? He had 80 strikeouts and six walks and 52 and a third. But he put David right on. He's a strike away from getting out of this jam in the eighth and preserve a two run lead. Two balls and two strikes. Tried to go up over the center of the plate, but got it up and away off the plate. Jansen took a little stroll, took a deep breath, and settles back in. The 2-2. Two, two. That missed. Full count. The runners will be moving on the pitch. So a long single, you might have a chance to see. Right score. But definitely on a double. Payoff pitch to right field. Charging is Puig, who makes the play. The Mets put a couple of guys on, but do not score. We head to the ninth at City Field.
After the game for the postseason show on TBS, presented by the Lincoln Motor Company, Casey Pedro, Chef, and Dusty standing by. Well, with the day off uh, tomorrow, if the Mets cannot come back in this game, Familia in this game to keep it where it's at. Boy, the Mets. You see Michael Conforto in. At left field and then Cespedes moves from left to center. But they put runners on they had the go ahead run at the plate. But Jansen up to the challenge. And so it's three one as we go to the ninth. And Puig leads it off looking for his first hit of the series and he's over three tonight. In the dirt from Familia. One and oh. Boy, this place was rocking. They've come here to celebrate. And it looked like the eighth could be a breakthrough inning, but not to be here at City Field. Well, we came on before the game and talked about Clayton Kershaw, and it wasn't any analytics, it was just a feel. A feel that a pitcher as good as he has been should not be one and six in the postseason. Should not be have an ERA of a two and an eliminate a nine in elimination games. He just felt at some point he had to have a signature game. I think today was it. We saw him long before the first pitch sitting in the outfield grass in left field just collecting his thoughts then getting stretched out then he comes in the dugout and he's high five and everybody it's a there was a lot of energy in that dugout before the first pitch Puig with the grounder in the hole. And Flores throws him out for out number one here in the ninth. And here's the catcher, A.J. Ellis, who with his fourth inning single ran his postseason hitting streak to 12 games, which is a Dodger record. He had shared it with Carl Crawford, but broke it tonight. We were kind of wondering today is this now look is game four going to be more like game one and two or more like game three when all those runs were scored uh -huh. and it's been very much like games one and two tough and tight. Dodgers fighting for their playoff lives and are three outs away from sending it back to Chavez Ravine for a game five on Thursday. Quick pitch there by Familia with the split finger. Cranky with the nod. <laughs> Probably the probable is right there, DeGrom and Granke for game five. In the air to left center field. Who wants it? Cespedes does. Two down. Let's take a look at tonight's forecaster presented by FanDuel. <laughs> Dodgers with a 95% chance of winning when leading after eight. And an 82 and four mark for Don Mattingly's bunch. Now here's Andre Ethier. Didn't start tonight. Ruggiano did and left against the left hander Stephen Matz. But when Matz's time was through tonight, Ethier came on as a pinch hitter. In the air to center. That'll be easy for Cespedes. One, two, three inning. We head to the bottom of the ninth. A Mets with one more chance.
2015 National League Division Series coverage on TBS is presented by T-Mobile. Thanks so much for being with us tonight here on TBS. Game four of this best of five. Jock Peterson into center field for the Dodgers, replacing Kike Hernandez. Peterson, great speed, can really go get him in the outfield. Yoenna Cespedes will lead it off. With the Mets down two. A strike from Kenley Jansen, 0 and 1. Can you imagine this place if that guy had been at the plate <laughs> with runners on in the eighth? It was loud as it was. A typical cesspit is cut. But nothing to show for it. 0 and 2. Boy, with this shift and all those cutters from Jansen, I don't know if Cespedes has a swing that he cut, can cut down on to hit that ball to the right side. And he goes down on three pitches to open up the bottom of the ninth. It's a high cutter. Got a little late movement to it. <laughs> I'll tell you, that guy has been dialed in all night. Clayton Kershaw looking for his second career postseason win. The other came against the Braves in the NLDS a couple of years ago, but he came in one and six. That's upstairs to Travis Darno. One and oh. All those hits last night, all those runs last night. You look at the board now. One run, one three hits for the Mets. Last night, 13 runs on 13 hits. Oh, yeah, Clayton Kershaw was pitching tonight. <laughs> That's why they say all the momentum st starts and stops with the pitcher. Especially the great ones. One ball and two strikes. Darno 0 for 3. Flied out to right, struck out in the fourth, and fouled out to Adrian Gonzalez in the seventh. Mets need a base runner to bring the tying run to the plate, but it's not going to be Darno. He strikes out. Two down. Yeah, you can see the intent is to elevate the fastball. Got a little cut to it, but it's really the velocity and the height of that pitch, not the cut that gets the strikeout. That's 11 more strikeouts for the Mets tonight's game. This has been the strikeout series. That's 46 Mets who have struck out in the series. And Lucas Duda knows that feeling. Twice tonight, nine times in the series. He's just two for 14. Jansen to the plate. A ball and a strike. Three runs for the Dodgers in the third inning. Gonzalez knocked one in. Justin Turner knocked in two. Clayton Kershaw, Chris Hatcher, and now Kenley Jansen making it stand up. That's in the air to center field. That's Jock Peterson, and that is a 2-2 two, two series. We are heading to Game 5 in Los Angeles with the Chicago Cubs waiting for the winner. Clayton Kershaw, his second postseason win. And the Dodgers fight off elimination. 
Talk Kershaw to hand the baton now to Zach Greinke. Talk about some weight coming off someone's shoulders. What a performance by Clayton in a game that the Dodgers had to have. As good a victory with all the things that he has accomplished. Three Cy Youngs. No hitter. This is as sweet as it gets. And it feels like where all the momentum was here and the advantage was with the Mets. Now you're thinking, okay, we've got to go back and face Greinke. Greinke against DeGrom. What a matchup. He had lost five consecutive starts in the postseason had Clayton Kershaw. But tonight with the season on the line, he goes seven strong. And the Dodgers, even the series at two games apiece, Clayton Kershaw is on the field with Sam Ryan. Sam. Clayton, you send the series back to Los Angeles to do this on three days rest. You look so excited out there before the game. How amped up were you? Yeah, I was pretty fired up. You know, I knew the adrenaline would take over there. It's just a matter of uh, controlling it. You know, the first inning, I was kind of all over the place a little bit, fortunate to get out of that. And then after that, felt pretty good. On Friday, their left-handed hitters had some success against you. Aside from Daniel Murphy tonight, not much. What was the difference? Yeah, those guys are swinging the bats really well, especially Curtis and Murphy at the top of the order. So uh, really, I just tried to mix it up a lot more. You know, usually I'm pretty uh, just kind of fired in there and let lefties go for it. But tonight I tried to mix it up a little bit more and uh, Murphy still got me. I thought it was a decent pitch, but, uh, you know, great hitters give them credit. Seventh inning postseason games have been somewhat of an Achilles heel for you to get through that seventh inning. We saw your reaction in the dugout, the big smile on your face. How key was that for you? Yeah, you know, after Cespedes got that infield single, I was, uh, you know, that's tough to get the leadoff guy on there. That's what you want to do, try to keep him off base. But uh, fortunate to get out of that. JT made a really nice play over there at third. And, uh, you know, it felt good. Definitely felt good to get out of that. Congratulations. We'll see you Thursday. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, that. That stop by Justin Turner on the shot by Flores to end the inning. Very big as Kershaw completed his seven innings of work and the Dodger bullpen took it from there. Two games apiece. Back to wrap it up right after this.